One of Ireland's best-known journalists, Charlie Bird, has died at the age of 74 after a public battle with motor neuron disease. Charlie was one of our RTE's most renowned news correspondents and reported on some of the biggest stories in Ireland and internationally during his 40-year career. We're now in the heart of Ground Zero. What Every vote this? is going to be keenly fought. Yeah, aerodrome where flying has been stopped all day. But none of these prisoners knows when they're going to get it's a fair training trial. the very fabric of the Soviet Federation. Been here on the island of Negros for over 30 years. I'm just a working journalist. That's what he used to say. But Charlie Bird was so much more than that. His life in journalism, spanning almost 40 years, brought him all over the world. Bird Klonsky branch. His interest in politics was on show as a member of Labour Youth long before he ever joined RTE as a researcher in 1972. One of his early assignments was the Stardust Fire tragedy in Artane in Dublin in 1981, when 48 young people died, a story that stayed with him throughout his life. Where all the emergency exits open at the time of the fire? In 1984, he was sent to report on the arrest and imprisonment of Father Niall O'Brien, an Irish Columban missionary priest falsely accused and detained in the Philippines on multiple murder charges. After that, news assignments took him all over the world. He came here 27 years ago. Back home, on the beat outside Leinster House, he established himself at the centre of political reporting. On occasion, he became part of the story himself. As the Northern Ireland peace process gathered pace and the IRA sought immediate contact, it was Charlie Bird they turned to. In 1998, we uncovered a tax evasion and overcharging scandal at National Irish Bank, which led to changes in bank regulation and culture in Ireland. That investigation, however, led to a long court battle with former Fianna Fáil TD Beverly Cooper Flynn. It's a great day for journalism and it's a great day for public service broadcasting. It seems most unlikely that any of the people who are named in this report who held Ansbacker accounts will face prosecution. As Irish public life was rocked by the revelations of the tribunals in the 1990s, Charlie's dogged reporting style brought many of the headlines to life. Do you mind me asking you if you're going to cooperate with the flood tribunal? In January 2009, he took up the role of Washington correspondent. While there, he tracked down former Anglo-Irish bank chief David Drum. He's in there, but he won't talk to us. In 2010, he returned home early and later spoke publicly about the loneliness he felt. He set off again, filming documentaries that brought him from the Amazon to the Arctic. Which are great when you're going out the door. <laughs> when he retired from RTE in 2012, Charlie put his energy into campaigning for causes he supported. Claire, Charlie, you're welcome. In 2021, his voice began to falter and he was diagnosed with motor neuron disease. It's difficult, but I'm not the only one going through this. His determination to confront the disease inspired a national outpouring of support. The Climb with Charlie event raised almost 3.3 million euro for charities. As his strength declined right up to his final days, he continued to extend what he called the hand of friendship to the people and the causes he met. Relentless in his pursuit of a story, selfless in his dedication to duty. As a journalist, he was fearless in his search no for the knows. truth. Charlie Bird, RTE News on the Rwandan border. But it was his common touch that set Hello. Charlie Bird apart. <laughs> a disarming ordinariness that newsmakers responded to and the public could trust.